So I've had a lot of viewers lately asking me about some really good budget cinema lenses to get for the Pocket 4K. And coincidentally, I was actually just sent some brand new Metacon Speedmaster T1 Cine lenses to test out on the Pocket 4K. Very interesting lenses. But would this lens be the right fit for your Pocket 4K setup? Let's get into it. Before we get into the video, I want to take a second to invite you to be part of the Frame Voyager community. We love getting to talk with everyone from around the world, um, other creatives, other videographers, and help answer questions or point you to the right place or just build a sense of community. So be sure to hit the notification bell and subscribe to this channel to keep up to date with all of our content. But uh, enough of that, let's go back to the video. So Zhongyi Optics sent me a couple of awesome lenses to test out a month ago, and one was a 50 millimeter EF lens, which we'll be talking about in a different video, but they also sent me a 17 millimeter MFT lens. This guy right here. Um, coming in at just $449, it's actually not that bad of a price for a budget cinema lens. In fact, if you like this set that much, you can buy a set of three of these, a 17 millimeter, 25 millimeter, and 35 millimeter MFT lens set for $1,200, which of course is a little bit pricier than uh, Rokinon's T1.5 lens kit that you can buy on Adorama uh, for about $980. But I would still say these are still within a decent price range for a, like a budget cinema lens, at least in my opinion. And some of it does come down to preferred, you know, look and whether or not you think these look better than a Rokinon lens. In this case, this does have a, a T1.0 versus a T1.5 of how the Rokinon has, which gives you added bokeh. Now you might ask what the quality of that might be, because when you get down that far in the T-stops, it does get a little bit odd and a lot of distortions, but we'll get into that here shortly. First, I want to talk about the construction of this lens. When I compare this to my um, uh, Rokinon lens, I would say this feels a little bit heavier, more expensive, I would say. But it could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. Sometimes it doesn't really matter what the lens feels like, but that's how my first impressions of very sturdy, a good build quality for this type of lens. It has an ultra fast, like we've talked about, T1 aperture, pretty compact design, pretty, I mean, this one, you know, 50 millimeters is a different, it's a different thing, but we'll get into that in the next video. Pretty easy to use, doesn't really add too much weight for me on the Pocket 4K, and you don't really need the rails for this. Zhang Yi also says this comes with a silent aperture control, smooth and long. You guys can hear it. Nice and quiet and nice and long. The only thing with it, it's nice. I feel like it's pretty accurate for the most part. The only thing I noticed with this, just to, just to look out for, is that it does pull a little bit sometimes um, when you're you're adjusting your focus. It just it, it has a tendency like uh, when you finally rotate get stuck a little bit. That could be this this lens that I have, or it could just be uh, the way I was doing it. But like that is one thing I did notice that I didn't love about it was just, so it feels like a little bit too much of a pull on the focus when I wanna try to rack the focus. But other than that, I think it was fine as far as focus throw. And I just like to throw out terms in case you haven't heard of some of these terms. I feel like there's a lot of times we just throw around terms in the camera community and don't really go into it, explain it to, for new, for new people watching these videos or even people who are really good at cameras but really haven't taken the time to learn the terms. Focus throw is basically measured in degrees and represents the amount of rotation needed to turn a lens focus ring from its minimum focus distance to infinity. A manual focus, again, tends to have that like as you can see, a very long focus throw, a larger focus than the like an autofocus lens because it allows you a much greater deal of accuracy when you're focusing in on something. Where some of those photography lenses or autofocus lenses, you'll notice that it doesn't give you like a ton of room to move with these or you can really nail um, your focus on things. Cinema lenses, which this is, are of course manual focus and have very long focus throws. So again, to allow very precise focus. Now, another another thing we talk about is focus breathing. Focus breathing is a term that 
describes a change in focal length that occurs as a result of adjusting the focus distance of a lens. It's a common issue that occurs on many photographic lenses. As focus is adjusted from close focus to infinity, focus breathing causes noticeable changes in both angle of view and magnification. And these changes are often very clear to, um, <laughs> to viewers when you see, very clear when that's happening with lenses like this. But I would say with this, I didn't really notice that much focus breathing um, in it. Like I said, it has low focus breathing, so you're always gonna have some of it. But this lens, yeah, I felt fine with it. The weight of it is about 1.32 pounds, according to the manufacturer. Um, and I weighed it, and it's pretty close to that. And so that's one thing that to think about with this versus maybe a Rokinon is the weight of it. It's I would say from the Rokinon I have, it's a little bit heavier. That's just one thing to think about when using this one would be uh, which kind of gimbals you, could, you would have to use. Um, because I feel like you would have to use a little bit sturdier of one, though now thinking about it, you could probably put this on it and it would probably help balance out the weight, especially if you have like a, uh, a uh, V mount battery on your camera as well. So just a consideration. Um, I don't think it'd be awful to put on a gimbal, but it's, it's one thing to think about with the weight. Next would be the flares uh, for this. I, I would say the flares for this, I kind of liked them. Um, that's sometimes what you get on some cheaper lenses. Uh, it's just like a, a, a flare that just, it does, doesn't look very nice. But with this, I loved how the flares turned out. Uh, they looked very distinct. About what I would expect to see out of a cinema lens. Now, image quality, what I really honestly wanted to get to more than anything, and the flare, sure, have something to do with image quality, so you can add that into the section. I felt great filming with this. This is one thing I do look for, is how good it feels to film with something if it doesn't look good quality. I could tell filming this, just looking on the screen of the pocket camera, that the footage was gonna turn out very nice from where we were filming. I would say in certain situations, and this is, uh, I don't wanna be taken the wrong way saying this, uh, I would say I like the look of this better than my uh, Sigma Art Lens 18 to 35 millimeter. Heresy! This should look better because it's designed for video, right? So, but in the Sigma, sort of, but more for photography, and it, it's also a, a zoom lens. So it has some of that issues that you have with zoom lenses on it that don't look as nice as these. Yeah, I, I liked the quality of this. It did add a nice softness with it with the T1 stop, which you can get nice bokeh on the, the 18 to 35 millimeter Sigma lens, because it can go down to 1.8 f-stops, but there's just something about this that just, of course, I'm saying this, it's sounding stupid, but it's just something about this that I, I just liked better as far as like a cinematic look. And that's one thing to consider here is, are you going for that cinematic look or are you going for more documentary production style, which can have that cinematic look, but you can get some of that out of a Sigma as well and have a little bit more flexibility for a project than you could with this. That being said, I plan to probably use these on some future projects, especially for some travel documentaries. It would be really cool to use them in that way to get some cinematic cutscenes, which I like to use in a lot of my projects. Footage quality, loved it. The Boca, again, I think it looks better than the Rokinons. And to be fair, I have a little bit of a bias against Rokinons. I just, I've used them in some projects and kind of got burned by the lenses, whether it's just like, odd glare issues coming from them. And they're native lenses, like I'm not putting them on an adapter. It's something where they shouldn't be doing that on the camera they are. And I've tried several different things and then get back and it's just like weird glares or, you know, maybe it's the lenses I've tried. I just have been, I just have never been impressed with the Rokinon lenses too much. And I feel like these are, these would be a step above them as far as like a, a, a budget cinema lens to get for the pocket 4K. So I, bokeh wise, I, it looks similar to how it, the bokeh would look on a Rokinon, a typical Rokinon lens, but I think it's, I just like the, the quality of it comes across a little bit better and it has a little bit less issues and um, artifacting, which I found the Rokinon lenses I've used have had in the past. But I will say the clutch thing with this is using it with, and I've done a video on this, this H&Y Revering, I absolutely loved using, and I've included the link to this video review, and I just loved it because it has the adapter to just put it right on the lens, just like that. I showed it in the other video. You guys can check that out if you're interested in this, but this with an ND and the black mist filters that H&Y has. This combined with this lens, to me, is really where I think the quality showed through when I put this on. 
Um, combining the two really makes this pop, I would say. This looks totally fine without this filter on it. I just think it really completes the set having this too. So I'll, I'll include this link in there below too if you're interested in testing out this lens or purchasing it. Um, I really think if you're going to, I would definitely get this to put on it, um, this black mist filter that they have. And it's and it's honestly super nifty, like the magnetic and, uh, and the cool, uh, just the super easy way to put these on. Um, but again, if you'd like to see footage of this specifically and me talking about how, my thoughts on this, uh, check out the video in the link below. But I would suggest buying this over a Rokinon and that's not because I'm putting affiliate links on it. I'm affiliate links on most of the stuff. I could put an affiliate link on a Rokinon and still get the same. But I, I just, these to me are better for you it's something I will use in the future for stuff. It, I've been very impressed with it over the past few months that I've gotten to test them out. So I'm gonna try not to drop it. But it really comes down to the last question. Is this a lens I would use in the future? I, I plan on using this lens and probably other Zhang Yi lenses here in the future. I'm actually kind of thinking about buying the set, but am I going to use this in every situation? And that's what you really need to think about when you're purchasing cinema lenses. What do you specifically want to use for them? Because sometimes it's cinema lenses can be great. Are they better for run and gun? They have no image stabilization. You're pairing them with a black magic camera. So how are you gonna counteract that? Are you gonna use a gimbal? Are you gonna use a steady cam? Are you gonna do it handheld? Are your hands steady enough to deal with that? Do you want this look? Cause sometimes having this look for certain projects isn't the kind of look you want, especially in some documentary work. So it's one of those things when coming down to this that I will use this in specific projects and for specific purposes. But would this be a lens that I would use in everyday shoots? No, for me, for what I do for run and gun and documentary stuff, having something like the 18 to 35 millimeter Sigma lens, or even for the pocket 4K, the, the 12 to 35 millimeter Lumix lens that has image stabilization in it, offers a lot more flexibility when you're kind of running around or you're in a car and you need something a little bit stable. Does this have better quality? Absolutely. But when it comes to run and gun and some of that, that's where cinema lenses have a little bit of a problem as far as usability. But if you plan your shots well, and you use these for specific purposes, and uh, I, I, they can be a great addition to your kit. It's just thinking through using these and what you need for it, what you're filming, and what's gonna help you out the most. Not saying anything bad about this, but that's just one thing to think about, and I like to at least talk about on my channel is, think through why you're buying gear, think what specific use you would use for it. And if you have one, great, but don't just buy things to buy things because I tell you to, or anyone tells you to. Think about what you would use this for. And uh, if it's similar to some of the things I've had or if other people have talked about on this lens, or you have a use for this that I haven't even thought of, for, by all means, get it. Always think about things you purchase and make sure that it fits into what you need. And it's not just acquiring more gear just to acquire more gear. But that being said, I do wanna thank Zhang Yi for sending me these uh, awesome lenses to try out for the past couple of months. And I really gotta enjoy getting to use them and uh, love the results from them. So thank you for sending those over and uh, allowing me to share it with everyone on my channel. That's about it for this video. If you guys have any comments or questions about this lens and particular thoughts, you know, about like how I felt about using it or specific things maybe I didn't address fully in this video, feel free to comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can or join our Discord community and ask me there. I love having discussions with people from all around the world at all different times of the day about camera gear, storytelling, and just life in general. So um, I've included the link to our Discord channel below if you're interested, but if not, comment below, I'll be sure to get back to you. Until next time. This is John Owens with Frame Voyager.